Emma's one-fifth of the award-winning makeover show Queer Eye, but for his latest project, Tan France is stepping out alone. Well, to highlight the issues around skin tone, colorism and skin bleaching, Tan confronts his past in a new, very personal documentary. Wow. Wow, Tan joins us now. I mean, congratulations with the documentary, because I think anyone that sort of opens themselves up and explores something, especially mm -hmm. something as personal as this, yeah. and I guess the idea came because you'd written the book and you touched on skin bleaching in the yeah. book. Just a kind of small little moment. One sentence. But a big reaction to mm -hmm. that. So you knew this was something that resonated with a lot of people. Yeah, I honestly didn't realise that people didn't know about colorism and they didn't know that bleaching was so prevalent in communities of colour. And so when I saw all the press, after this little one sentence in my book, yeah. it blew my mind thinking, we need to talk about this more, people aren't talking mm. about it. And I, and I wanted to make people uh, see or help people see that they weren't alone. So explain, because mm -hmm. um, this isn't necessarily racism no. we're talking about here. This is within communities yeah. and status within communities depending on colour tone. Yeah, can I explain the difference real quick, uh, the difference between racism and colorism? So yeah, racism yeah. is when you are uh, attacked or judged based on your race because you're a different race from somebody else. With yeah. colorism, it's within your own community and it's based on how light or how dark you are. So if you are lighter skinned, you're perceived as uh, more worthy, more, a better chance of success in life. And if you're darker skinned, it affects many areas of your life, whether you will get married, whether you'll get a good job, whether you'll be seen as worthy within that community. And so, I mean, it's extraordinary that at the age of nine, mm -hmm. you were aware of that and yeah. thinking about that because that was the first time that you took to the bleach to yeah. put some on your skin to see what would happen. To be fair, it's only because I could only get access at nine, I was able to steal it from a family member. Before then, I wanted to bleach, I just didn't have access. So I was aware of skin tone, my skin tone, from as early as three or four years old, thinking, oh, I've got to wow. sort out the problem that I've got. And so by oh the time God. I hit nine, was that was the first time I did it. And it's uncomfortable, it's painful, and it can cause major issues. So I only did it for a couple of weeks, and then I did it again when I was older. Um, were you darker than other members of the family? Or... Yeah, a little bit darker than other f members of the family, but I wasn't... It's funny, I think a lot of people will look at this thinking, he's light-skinned, what's the problem? It doesn't matter what colour you are, you still are affected by colorism, and when you hear all around you, the lighter you are, the more successful you'll mm -hmm. be, you want to find a way to make sure you're as light as possible so you will get a good marriage. Well, you just said something then. You said, and then I did it again when I was a teenager. Yeah. And this is new information. This wasn't in the book. This is something no. that you've only opened up about the first yeah. time during the documentary. And the reason behind that is because although colorism is something that is spoken about within yeah. your community, there is a lot of shame attached to actually doing it. Yeah. I didn't mention it when I wrote my book, and I'd never mentioned it publicly, because by the time I was 16, I was worried that people would think, wait, then were you ashamed of your skin? Are you? Do you think that darker skinned people are not as attractive or as worthy? However, as I've started to explore this documentary and, and walk down this road, I realized that at 16, I really was still a child. And yes, I was convinced to bleach again, but it wasn't because I thought that whiter is more beautiful. I just thought I need to find a way to date. I need to find a way to get a job. I need to find a way to get potentially a marriage. And so I felt so much pressure, but at 16, I was a lot more aware. And so I stopped very early into bleaching at 16. And so this is an unregulated industry here. You can, you, you, you can mm. essentially, you know, sort of buy the stuff, yeah. do it yourself injure yourself. Yeah. So you have all of these you know, young people going mm. out uh, and feeling that they have to do that. Yeah. Is the, so is the issue the, f the fact that it's unregulated and you can buy this stuff, or is the issue that it is, exists within communities in the first place? You know, it's something that we touch on in the documentary. It's hard to decide who, who, where the problem lies. Uh, it's years and years, centuries of conditioning convincing us that there's only one way to be successful. However, if this product wasn't available, would we see that there was a solution to mm. the problem? Probably not. And so we can't really blame the industry for providing this product, we would find a way to do it. There are places in Africa, in, in Vietnam, in the Philippines, where they will get whatever they can, literal bleach from a toilet. We've oh seen we've seen videos during this documentary. They will find whatever they can to solve the problem. And so 
I can't blame these companies for. But is for there is weakness. there discussion within the communities to say right? Okay, we've got to we've got to. No. people are being injured here. We have to stop this. No. Or is it always going to be that way? Yeah, I think it's. I would love to believe that in my lifetime there will be a time when there's no such thing as colorism. I just can't imagine it's going to change anytime soon because we don't talk about it in our communities. It's done very much in the shadows. I didn't even tell my family I was bleaching. But by talking about it and making documentaries like yeah. this, this is what you have in your. This is this is your yeah. power. This is yeah. what you have because you are a father now. You've got a nine-month-old yeah. son. Yeah. <laughs> and so you hope that actually his experience of life and how mm -hmm. he feels about his own skin tone will be very different. Yeah. It's the reason I decided to do this documentary. I'm not the kind of person who ever would have thought, oh, I'll do a documentary. I had nothing to talk about. However, my son is incredibly important to me. He's the oh. best thing in the world. And oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. Sweet. He's an angel from heaven. I love him so, so much. <laughs> um, and my biggest concern was that he would feel the things that I felt. And I remember being really tortured as a kid thinking, I just don't want to yeah. feel these feelings. And it's not my fault that I'm this color. And I, I wanted him to know that I'd done all I could to make sure that people understand and hopefully to convince people to not judge him based on his yeah. skin tone. There's something I read this morning I was going through some of your story, I mean, mm. we've met before, we've talked about all sorts of mm. things. But were you assaulted at the age of five? Yeah, it wasn't the first time and it wasn't the last time. Oh, my God. Um, this is one of the reasons you can't go back to Doncaster, which, mm. is, your, which is where you grew up. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go back in the documentary then yeah. because of moments like that. Yeah, and it's the reason I don't live in the UK now. And this wasn't based on colorism, it was because of racism. I was five, I was walking to school, I was on my own. It was literally a block away, so not even two minutes. And so my mum was working every hour that God sent. She's an immigrant. My brother, who would normally go to work with, sorry, school with me, was sick. And so I had to walk alone. And on the way to school, a group of men beat me and left me for dead. And it was purely because I'm Pakistani in England. And so partly the reason why I wanted a to group bleach, of men a group beat of men, a five-year-old. Be, yeah, beat and left me for dead. And it was common. It happened very regularly. And so the reason, partly the reason why I wanted to bleach was I wanted people to not realize at first glance that I was Asian. I thought maybe if they just thought I was foreign, they'll leave me alone. Oh, I'm so sorry, that's horrible. When you have kids, you start to realize how disgusting it is. When I was a kid, I thought, well, it's just a matter of fact, it's just our life. Like, we get beaten. You don't beaten. have to have kids to realize that's disgusting. It, it, now that I have children, I realize, wow, the thought of my child going through that makes me feel physically sick. Absolutely, you do not yeah. need to have children to feel that compassion. But now I feel it so much greater. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, the, the documentary goodness. Beauty and the Bleach is uh, next Wednesday on BBC Two at 9 o'clock. Um, I know that you have been campaigning big time for mm -hmm. Queer Eye UK. Yeah, definitely. I mean, enough for them. It's almost like restraining all the time. Yeah, the I think producers. Netflix is going to fire me. Right, <laughs> yeah. How, are you any closer now? I don't think so. Well, I think We've done it in Japan, haven't they? We've done it in Japan. We did it in Australia. I would love to do a UK version. However, I think the only way we're going to do it is if we do, it, do a new Queer Eye and maybe with me on that cast. Right. Because we have a, a Queer Eye Germany now, a Queer Eye Brazil. Hopefully there'll be a little Oh, you definitely do I would it. love to do it. Do it do I want to spend just a few months in the UK. Well, Netflix are all over this show. All over. They? Every, whether we're watching right now and the offices yeah, they are. are. Yeah, they yeah. woke up early in LA to watch this. I know yeah. they... <laughs> exactly. Well um, done. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much.